Hey folks, and welcome to my thoughts on a book. And today's book is The Suicide Shop by Jean Toulet. I hope that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, there will be spoilers. Alright, and this is the uh, English translation by... Uh, one sec. Um, by Sue Dyson. I'll uh, leave that down below in the description. It's originally uh, French. Right. So, uh, the, sto the, the suicide shop is, uh, well, quite the story, actually. Reminded me a lot of, uh, you know, the Adams Family. Maybe in the sense of that world where, you know, them throwing bombs are almost uh, killing each other is uh, quite normal. But it tells about, well, literally, as the name says, a suicide shop. So I guess in this uh, universe, in the city of forgotten religions, as they often call it, where they live, um, it's quite, uh, well, it's actually in the norm to kill yourself, basically. There's a suicide shop, you go in and you pick your method. As they say on their bags, was your life a failure will make your death a success. So, tells the story of the family that runs the shop. Uh, I, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce their surname. I should have prepared it in advance. But anyway, um, it tells of Lorsay and Mishima. Uh, the, that's the, the mom and dad. And their children, um, uh, Vincent, Ma Marilyn, and Alan. So for about 10 generations, uh, they ran, the family ran the suicide shop, everything was depressing, and everyone wanted to die. But of course they can kill themselves or else who's gonna run the shop, after all. And, but, but then they, ha they have Alan, their third child, but he's not like them or his siblings. He's a happy, optimistic baby who then turns into a grows into a happy, optimistic child. And because of him, things uh, are starting to change. Because again, it's like a, you know, a family of pessimists living with an optimist. It's, uh, so there's quite a few entertaining moments. There's also probably references in there, oops, sorry, that I didn't understand. Like the, the daughter's name is Marlin, so this is actually Towards the end of the story, there's a scene where Wind is about to blow her white dress up, like, uh... In the, in the scene from the movie, The Seven Year Itch. So yes, uh, things start uh, quite depressingly. Uh, Alan's parents are unhappy with him, you know, how he's constantly positive and says nice things and all that. And his uh, older brother is anorexic, and his sister feel, feels useless. And uh, so uh, the time goes. Um, it, it's written in an interesting way. It doesn't really, you know, tell you how much time has passed, or the time has passed. It's just you understand, because we start with Alan being a baby, then he's six years old, and then towards... Towards the end of the, from there, then we go to 11, and that's the age he pretty much stays till the end of the book. So yeah, it's like he just uh, skips to moments and days. So I like that. But it's not confusing, you, you can understand more or less how much time has passed. So then we reach when Alan is 11. Marlin, Marlin is uh, 18 and Vincent is, I think, 21 because he's three years older than her. And so she feels useless, so the supplier of the... It's an interesting bit. Their supplier, who apparently um, supplies them with all this stuff so people can kill themselves, gives uh, sells to her parents this uh, poison that she could inject into her and then she'll be poisonous. And so, and then uh, they, they give it to her on her 18th birthday, Alan gives her a silk scarf, Vincent gives her a way to kill herself. It's quite, uh, quite entertaining. 
But, um, so she kisses people and then they, uh, they're supposed to die from, from her poisonous saliva. Now she, you know, she feels not like a woman, all sexy and stuff. But then uh, we find out that she was in love with the cemetery warden. And he wants her to kiss him because she doesn't come around to the graveyard anymore. And he misses her terribly. And now she's uh, completely, completely depressed. They can never be together because her saliva will kill him. But then apparently Alan has removed the poison from the uh, injection that she... Um, the syringe and put in uh, saline so something else so now she's not poisonous and uh, th basically at this point he's really starting to drive his dad mad you know, because he keeps trying to you know, kind of convince the customers you know you need to live you need to love yourself and it all continues now Merlin and Ernest are the, the, that's the warden's name are together and well the things start to rapidly change from there towards the end uh, Mishima has a nervous breakdown and his son and the rest of the family in a matter of days turn the whole uh, the whole suicide shop to sort of more like a like kind of like a little restaurant the mom cooks and they sell masks and everything and they have a new supplier and then the, go the government comes in, they want to have a mass suicide after announcing something. And <laughs> apparently they, they no longer even have any poison and Alan mixes it up and uh, they, they all get laughing gas instead. And that just breaks Mishima. The day he, finds, uh, the day he sees that, he's like, that's it. I'm going to commit seppuku. So he, he runs up to, to after Alan to the tower the, where where they live, where the shop is. It's, it's sort of this house that used to be some kind of religious building, and there's a, you can pray and stuff. So they go up all to the tower. Mashima wants to kill himself. Laura says it, she'll kill herself as well. So does Marlin. So does Vincent. And the, the poor Alan, he doesn't know what to do now. He doesn't want any of his family to kill themselves. And then he goes, but then he stumbles and uh, falls from the tower. But luckily, uh, he grabs onto something. And then Vincent, who's uh, on top of being anorexic, mo all his life walked around with this turban of bandages because he uh, constantly had migraines. So he quickly unwraps it, and Alan and they and they push it down, and uh, Alan grabs it, and they start to pull him, and you know, and they all uh, suddenly they're all happy. Marlin says, you know, she and Ernest will name their child Alan. If it's a boy, if it's a girl, Al Elaine. And they're all happy, and his mom has a happy memory, and and then the the, the ending just kind of bamboozled me. So they, they almost got him. Yeah, everyone's happy, and he's happy, they're happy. And they almost got him up. He's like almost in hand reach. They're about to get him to safety. And he lets go. That's it. He lets go, and obviously he probably dies. I, I, I'm just bamboozled. So the, what? He's so happy he decided to commit suicide now? Mind you, it's not like he purposefully, you know, went to, to tumble. He, he tripped. Fell backwards. So, the what? After all that optimism, that's it? Goodbye? Is that a way to ensure none of them ever go back to the suicide business? Like, sorry, I, I can't. My I lost my youngest son that way. I, I just don't get it. Is it meant to be poetic? Like, he was brought into the world. By the way, he, he, they weren't supposed to have three kids. They were testing a, uh, apparently an, another suicide method, which is a uh, condom with a hole in it, so you can get uh, certain diseases during uh, fun time with another adult. 
if you're also a legal adult. So, <laughs> I don't know, this is not meant to symbolize, you know, that his purpose was to, you know, make, make his family happy and make sure they get out of the suicide business. And yeah, because they're planning, they said they, you know, made enough money. Sorry, they're cutting the leaves and bushes down there. So now that they have enough money, they can open a restaurant or whatever, and that's it. Now he's almost at safety, and he decides now nah, just I'll let go and be done with it. I, I, I don't get it. I, I honestly don't. Maybe it is meant to be this poetic thing. Or it's just mind-boggling, because it just ends. Ironically, on a cliffhanger. Because he's also on a on a cliff, and he just lets go. I, I, I honestly don't get it. Like, that said, he, he let go and, and, and died? After everything? I, 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 I don't know. I, I really don't know what, what to think about that. It was, uh, it, it was something. It was something. Maybe that's the whole, uh, the, the whole point. Like, he fulfilled his purpose. I, I don't know. But uh, regardless of the bamboozling ending, for me anyway, I did enjoy reading this. It, it does go on, you know, very fast. It, it is interesting. It, it's kind of like, yeah, like the Adams Family, where this sort of thing is in the norm for... Uh, well, with the Adams family, it's in the norm for them, but in this uh, universe, in this city, it's, again, completely normal for you to commit suicide. So, yeah, that's, uh, that, that, that is something. I did enjoy reading this. It was, it was very entertaining. But again, a bamboozling ending. I gave it three stars. I just... I just can't, kind of can't get over the ending. Now, there is a movie, The Suicide Shop. It is based on this book. Where, and from what I remember, it looks like they made it a bit more kid-friendly. Well, not, not, not kid-friendly, but... Um, the characters are younger. Definitely there. And Alan doesn't die in the end. For, uh, yeah, I remember. He doesn't die in the end. They definitely made differences there. Not that there's anything that's sexual here, but there are several. Well, one sensual moment, which I guess they decide not to, not to put in. Well, actually, several. Yeah, so it's not. Uh, it's, it's not like the movie. Definitely, they they made changes. But yeah, overall, I did enjoy it. So, uh, I guess if you like weird sort of stories, uh, you might enjoy this one. Or if you want something short to read, because it's, uh, it's less than 200 pages. Then, uh, yeah, I think if you like the Adams Family as well, you might find this entertaining. And stuff. Uh, this gentleman, uh, Mr. Toule, uh, has more books. I've uh, seen. I'm gonna look for some other stuff of his. See if uh, if any of them are different. All right. So that is it, folks. Uh, I hope you hear me well over the bush cutting. And that is it. Uh, let, no, uh, let me know if you've ever read this, or if you heard about it, or if you've seen the movie. And that is it. Till next time. Should probably age restrict this one. All right. Bye.